Hello. Is it sexual harassment to call someone bold? Yes. Yeah, so oh. Now, this Keith. is an interesting one. <laughs> oh, I can't believe they gave that to you, no. Keith. That is so unfair. <laughs> so what I don't understand about this story, and we've probably all read about it because this employment tribunal ruled that calling someone bold at work, in the workplace, was a form of sexual harassment. Now, what I don't understand about that is, is you know, and, and their argument over was that because hair loss is much more prevalent among men, it's not singularly among men, but much more prevalent, it's a form of discrimination. So whereas I would say it was really rude and unnecessary and all the rest of it, and, and deeply unprofessional, how is it... Se I, I can't make the leap to, to how this becomes sexual. How mm. is that a sexual... Well, it was around the corner. It was meant to happen when everybody's, uh, you know, gender identity is mentioned in their defense. Yeah. You know, uh, bald men are going to get involved in that too because they've been taking it for so long, haven't they? You've been. <laughs> Isn't that like so a... brave, right? <laughs> oh. but... Are you okay? <laughs> um, but doesn't Larry David do a whole thing about that in Curb Your Enthusiasm about the idea that you know, bold, bold people are the ones that get all the flack and they don't get anyone defending them? Yeah. Right. So it's a joke, but it's. I feel bad. I have too much hair. It's too thick. Look at it. I know. <laughs> I know. You could share it with Keith. I know. <laughs> what do you think about this, Josh? You got any thoughts? No, yeah, I sexual mean, harassment? I think, OK, you want to see if it's sexual harassment? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, now it got sexy. Yeah, no, <laughs> I feel like you're sexually harassing all the rest of us. <laughs> That's what it felt like to me. I, I apologise. Yeah. Uh, it was a step too far. No, I, it isn't sexual harassment. Can't be. But I do think there is an hypocrisy here where it's seen as, and I sort of read a column in The Guardian again, where the columnist, Stephanie Hewitt, I think, or something, said essentially, well, it's funny. It's like, well, you know what? It's actually, I don't know about you, but I found when I started losing my hair actually quite traumatic. Well, that's why it's not, yeah, but that's Yeah, why I'm not saying it's sexual harassment, but it is quite traumatic. And, and I think taking the mickey, it's seen as a socially acceptable form of taking the mickey out of someone's appearance. It's like with ginger-haired people. That, that's seen as acceptable. You can just mock ginger-haired people. And that's, mm. that, that became... No, that's a... fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I, I worry that there's so many boundaries and definitions now of things you can and can't say that... We're just destroying our relationships with one another. All yeah. we have left is humor anyway. That's all we've got is a couple of jokes. Among you know? friends as well. Like exactly. The, and, you know, say that as someone with hair, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had people make comments about my appearance, you know, most of my adult and, and uh, pre pubescent life, actually, because I was too tall and all that stuff. Yes, yeah, so and you I get it. You get it. It, it, it became, it's hurtful. Well, I guess it was, but it also became a way for me to defend myself verbally. You know, I was too weak to punch back or I was too afraid of hitting somebody. <laughs> so I became, you know, more verbal in my defense. And now I'm, I'm glad that I can. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just think, I just, I just uh, people should just calm the F down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, thank you for self-censoring that. You're welcome. <laughs> Very important to me.